Hello everyone. Today we are talking about the authentication protocol Kerberos. Kerberos is an authentication system that supports single sign-on and works via symmetric cryptography. It is used by Microsoft, but applications for Unix systems and Apache web server are available as well. When we're talking about authentication, we naturally have subjects and objects. In Kerberos' context, both are called principles. The heart of the Kerberos protocol is the Kerberos server, which is called Key Distribution Center or KDC. The KDC itself is logically split into two parts. The authentication server, which, as the name suggests, takes care of authenticating principles, and the ticket granting server, which grants tickets. For example, to subjects for access to certain objects. Note that this split is only logically, and in fact there is only one actual component, the KDC. The sine qua non of Kerberos is that principals must trust the KDC, and it will become apparent soon why this must be the case. Before I explain in detail how Kerberos works, let's look at a typical use case. Alice wants to access a certain document. The KDC grants a ticket to her, which she then uses to access Doc12. This ticket says which principal gets access to which other principal and for how long. Note that as long as this ticket is valid, there can be no authorization change because Alice now has the ticket she can use to access Doc12 and will not have to be granted a new one. This is a drawback of Kerberos, which I will come back to later. Let's now look at how it works in more detail. As we've previously established, all parties trust the KDC and both other logical servers, the authentication server and the ticket granting server, so it is possible that all principals store their symmetric keys on the authentication server. Note that Alice herself doesn't even store her key, but rather generates it using her password. This way, she authenticates with the authentication server. Kerberos uses a challenge response protocol for authentication. This means that instead of exchanging hashed passwords, Alice sends a nonce to the AS, which the AS now uses, together with the symmetric key, in order to prove that he knows the key. I will talk about challenge response protocol in another video, but for now, it is just a way to prevent replay attacks. So after Alice authenticated herself to the authentication server, the AS sends her a ticket granting ticket. This is not the ticket she can use to access Doc12 yet. This encrypted ticket gets sent to Alice and it contains the symmetric key between Alice and the ticket granting server. Alice now has everything she needs in order to request a ticket to access Doc12. She sends a request to the ticket granting server using the symmetric key she got from the ticket granting ticket. The TGS now grants her the service ticket, the ticket used to access a certain service, in this case Doc12, which is encrypted with Doc12's symmetric key. That means that Alice cannot open this ticket, as she obviously doesn't know the key. Also, she gets the symmetric key between herself and Doc12, which she can use to encrypt messages between herself and Doc12. This key is also part of the service ticket, which is how Doc12 will get access to it. Alice now sends the service ticket and an authenticator to prove her identity to Doc12. As Doc12 has the symmetric key between Doc12 and the KDC, he can decrypt the ticket derive the symmetric key between Alice and Doc12 and can himself also respond with an authenticator to prove that they, in fact, know the symmetric key between Doc12 and DES. This way Doc12 authenticates himself to Alice because she can now decrypt it using the symmetric key between herself and Doc12. This concludes the Kerberos protocol. There are two issues uh, I want to briefly uh, talk about. First, the KDC stores all keys and is therefore a valuable target and also a single point of failure. If the KDC is compromised, all keys need to be revoked and everything has to be set up anew by changing the KDC's key twice. This is also what the golden ticket attack targets, which I will talk about uh, in another video. Second, the ticket's validity is set in stone. If a ticket is valid for 24 hours, there is no way to revoke that so changing permissions is not quickly possible. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover, like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.